You know, Candace Owens, you may know her. She's a Daily Wire host. And she went on Tucker Carlson's show, which is free on X.com, now owned by Elon Musk, I believe still the richest man in the world, South African. And I thought the conversation truly summarized how I think a lot of Americans are feeling lately in a very sober way, in a very clear way. And I know it's been a difficult conversation without it devolving into name calling. You hate, you're, you're just mad, you're an anti-Semite, you're, you, hate, you hate the Arab people, etc. But I thought this conversation was very clear. We saw George Floyd and all that mess and Black Lives Matter and the, and the total, just ignoring basic, like reality, truth. Trump running and the establishment turning on him. And all he wanted to do was what I think a lot of people like me and viewers want. It's to put America first, right? So I wanted, I want to get into this Tucker Carlson ex Candace Owens interview. There's a couple of interesting moments too. We're going to give it a little bit of nuance. But in general, the conversation was very interesting. It was very great. So I'm going to pull this clip up. I've basically bra broken down the interview into a couple of parts here. Let's get, let, let's stop talking about it. Let's get into it and let us watch the first clip. Here. People like Candace Owens and others have been flagrant at putting out disinformation into the public sphere. The top performing post of the week was this post by Candace Owens, a far right wing commentator and a favorite on Fox, denigrating George Floyd. Notice why they were attacking Candace Owens. What did she say? She said, well, actually, George Floyd was not murdered by a racist cop, much less by a systemically racist society. She said, actually, the vaccine doesn't work very well and it may be dangerous. She went on to say, no, Ukraine is not going to win the war against Russia. And for saying these things, every one of which is proven true, she was attacked as an immoral person, a racist and a traitor to her country. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. By the way, me. you're about to have another descendant. Actually, yeah. I have another descendant. You heard that? You know, Candace Owens is pregnant. A little more on that later. Jeez. <laughs> 40, 40 weeks, but I was not missing this. I was so excited. So I'm nice. honored to be here. Yeah, so I was out of the country yesterday um, and didn't have adequate internet access on the plane to really follow this. And I don't understand the context exactly, but um, the internet was dominated yesterday by video of Ben Shapiro, who you work with at the Daily Wire, um, I think it's fair to say, attacking you. Here's the video. I just want to get your reaction to it. Oh, yeah. There's a bit of drama, too. I kind of covered this yesterday. But you know about this maybe a little bit. And then the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this is disgraceful. Without a doubt. I can't pause that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I think that her her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not faux sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying, and I find them disreputable. So maybe there's a point in the video where he explains what exactly you did wrong, and how you were wrong. I, I haven't seen it. Um, but to call somebody, quote, absolutely disgraceful, particularly a coworker, seems like a pretty big step. What, and, and I really don't know the background here. What is that about? You know, there isn't much of a background. I saw the video when everybody else saw it when I woke up. Um, no, one, he, no one warned you about it. Nobody warned me about it. I, I, it looks like maybe he didn't know he was being recorded. It looks yes. like it was some sort so, of... So, yeah, there's a little bit of drama here. You know about this maybe a little bit. I covered this yesterday. But you know, my, you might be aware of the drama where, you know, Ben Shapiro, host of the Daily Wire, thank you, sir, it had some had a moment there where he, he called out Candace Owens. But it wasn't really a call out; it was a private event, and um, you know, maybe a little bit of feminine energy coming in here. It's like, well, there's probably things she thinks that are disgraceful. But anyways, for a private event, I got no clarity on the issue that he was particularly speaking on, and in what was said. I also, I can't respond to it beyond what he's saying because it's just ad hominem attacks. I don't know. Yeah, because it's not, you know, we disagree or yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think she's correct or maybe she doesn't know what she's talking about. It's absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, exactly. And so I can't respond to it on a level of intellect because there, there's nothing that he has expressed in that, at least in that short clip that he fundamentally disagrees with in terms of what I said. But I will say that. I'm not going to respond with the same ad hominem attacks. Yes. I don't think it helps further discussion. And it, if I, that was me. Hake in the chat says ad hominem attacks are legitimate. Legitimate. They can be true and valid. Yeah, yeah. This is like this is like drama between Ben and Candace. I think she's kind of being a warning about it. I mean, 
No need to take it personally, I guess. I mean, I, it didn't seem like Ben Shapiro even knew he was being uh, filmed. But what's important is what's coming up because a lot of people, like Candace, are being called things. Maybe not disgraceful, but they're being called anti-Semitic for simple things. Let's get into it. With, I would be embarrassed. I would. So I think that the video speaks more to Ben's character than it speaks to mine. How are you on different sides of it? I, mean, no. I haven't heard you endorsing Hamas. <laughs> like you're not. No. Well, I have not endorsed Hamas in any way, <laughs> and yet people have interpreted things that I say, or actually rather things that I don't say. It's becoming very much reminiscent to me and why I have used my platform to say this of Black Lives Matter, huh. where if you don't say anything, they say your silence is violence. If you say something and it's even handed and it's nuanced, which is to say, you know, during the times of Black Lives Matter, you might say, I don't support police brutality. Who no, does? I don't support racism. Who does? But also, I think that police are a crucial part of every uh, city. We need to have pol policing in cities. So these calls to defund the police are immoral and wrong and are going to lead to more black deaths. People didn't want that nuance when black life following George Floyd, there was no nuance. You had to explicitly say defund the police. Um, you had to post a black square. If you didn't post a black square on Instagram, by the way, specifically on the platform of Instagram, and you maybe were busy that day, maybe you were in another country, you know, maybe you just didn't log on to Instagram, you were accused of being a racist. I'm seeing a lot of that behavior right now when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, a conflict that I have seen every single person, including myself, condemn what happened on October 7th. I have, because who wouldn't condemn terrorism? It's right. obvious who would not condemn innocent Israelis dying. But if you then say that it is also sad when an innocent Palestinian child dies, suddenly, this is pro Hamas, or you need to say, even when you're talking about how sad it is that a child dies, you need to button that statement by saying, but that child was a human shield. That's not going to be my response. Um, first off, as a mother, that's not going to be my response as somebody who is about to do to give birth when I see these images of children yes. involved on both sides of the conflict. I have pointed to the, the people that are mocking dead Israeli children and said that they are horrific. I am even keel on this matter. And yet people think that you need to be extreme. So people that have become more radical and extreme are perceiving a moderate stance as not enough. And because you, I was about to say, you don't, people can disagree with you or agree with you or whatever, but you certainly don't seem radical on this topic. <laughs> Definitively not radical. These are things that should be allowed in an academic discussion. You should be able to sit on stage and should be able to debate these ideas without using ad hominem attacks to say that you're a pro Putin pu puppet or you're pro terrorism, even in the aftermath of 9 11, something that we all remember as part of my childhood. I think I was in seventh grade at the time, and I'm born in the New York City area. So this was a very big deal. If a person the day after 9-11 wanted to debate the Patriot Act, it's not fair to call them terrorist sympathizers. No. Actually, they would have been proven right in the long run that act we gave up a lot of our freedoms. And I think there was only one congressman, a Republican, that was against the uh, the Patriot Act at that time. So it's important, actually, when you start making decisions in a highly emotional time that people sit down and have these academic debates. And there are people that are saying, no, it doesn't matter because people are dead, that you need to just choose a side and that needs to be it. It needs to become tribal. The emotions of the American public, Congress, politicians post 9-11. The emotions afterwards and the mistakes that people made. You see, uh, what she was saying about the nuance of Black Lives Matter is so true. And a lot of people feel this way when defending white people, for example. You know, they get called race traitors. Meanwhile, we're really just calling out an injustice. It would have been, that is plain to us. That no, That is ignored institutionally in schools and in jobs calling it out it would be the same if it was somebody else you feel me it's because it's right these things need to be discussed and debated and and allowed to be at least discussed like candace was saying